There was there were no easy scenes, unfortunately. There was like there was no like oh small scene in an office. Congratulations on the show. Um, I just rewatched it again. I saw it four weeks ago, and uh, I rewatched it again to remind me of the beautiful shots. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, and thank you so much for you know taking the time to talk to us about like the visual craft of you know what everyone did on the show. Thank you. Well, it's it's beautiful um, for a TV show. Well, Marvel has gone Marvel has gone above and beyond. I mean, there's no other uh, company that does that that makes it so special. Watching it at home. Yeah, um, we we definitely tried to make it like a film, like a movie type journey, and like use all the techniques we'd use in a like a and what you know even a, a very complicated film as much as we could, and what we did, and uh, yeah, they really encouraged us. They they gave us a lot of rope, and we we ran with it. Uh, and uh, yeah, I worked on episode one and episode three, and also five and six, but we can't talk about that. Ah, uh, that's what I've been waiting for. They gave me all four at once, and I said I have to wait a whole month. <laughs> to watch uh, five and six. So for you, I talked to um, Andrew a little bit about his mm -hmm. challenges. Um, like he had the storage room, which was all reflective surfaces. So for you, what was like the biggest uh, challenge? Boy, um, for me, it's hard to say. I don't like, I mean, I should have a simple answer for like what set it should be. Um, I'm just blanking right now. Cause I'm not, I'm sorry, I've been, this is but the uh, of the day, I know it's been but a long day. <laughs> the uh, no, I think well, in some ways, it wasn't necessarily like the individual technical challenges. The the one of the biggest challenges was uh, breaking down the script into this into the individual sort of acts and segments that are in the camera point of view. Uh, the blinks were a big ch challenge to like get the camera in the right place and make the you know make the illusion that uh, time had gapped for Stephen. Uh, just in terms of sets, the Chamber of the Gods was a very big set in episode three. Mm -hmm. And so were these incredible uh, gold pyramids outdoors in Mogart's, uh, you know, shooting on the Felucca with this like, really crazy color light. And I, well, the thing about this uh, journey, which I really admire the scripts, is that they were each, each, like this, each script is like a film. You have like a lot of different locations and you travel around. It's like a weird travel log. And each also we use like different genres of filmmaking throughout as we're going. So there was, there were no easy scenes, unfortunately. There was like, there was no like, oh, small scene in an office. There, there was none of that. Every scene was like, oh my goodness, we have to build something or make something or do something uniquely different. Um, so, uh, you know, I wouldn't like to say the entire show was a big challenge, but. Yeah, I mean, just thinking back about all the the settings and all the landscapes, it's like, wow, that's a big. I yeah. mean, and it was and you guys shot it during the pandemic, so I'm sure it wasn't easy. <laughs> oh yeah, with goggles and masks and everything like that, and, and trying to like, it's very, that's not easy. And then shooting in the desert in Jordan was also amazing. I mean, we shot uh, the beginning of three there when Harrow, you know, is revealing he's got the scarab, and he's that's an incredible view and staging a whole scene on the edge of this cliff and. It's an incredible thing, and and you know our directors really pushed for that, and you know so did I to try and be as real as possible when we could. Obviously, you know when we're on the top of a sand hill and Conchu is making the sky go backwards, we'll you know there won't be a sky there when we do it, uh, and but I'll have to create this incredibly complex effect. That actually may be one of the bigger technical challenges was to create the feeling of the sky whizzing by and and uh, it changing its speed in terms of the story as this as the scene is progressing because the light needs to be bright enough to actually cast a shadow and to have different colors of all the mm -hmm. sky things. So we had to create a giant arc of like LED lights that were bright enough to do that and program oh. in a way that would, because that way when you're looking at him, you can see the, you know, the light is traveling across. We actually couldn't move a light that quickly because it's going, you know, 130 feet in two seconds. So designing like a lighting rig that would create that feeling of the sky whizzing by uh, was quite tricky. And the VFX department were incredibly grateful that I managed to, to pull it off in a way with the amazing lighting crew from Hungary uh, to do that. Cause it, it really, and that's the only light in the scene and it makes the scene kind of magical. And it really helps Oscar too. Cause then he's actually looking at something. You see something moving and, right. and May and stuff. Cause if often you're doing green screen to marks and but at least having a giant, you know, like, you know, pattern of sky ish moving across, gave them something to play and, and help. I think it helped out a lot. Wow. That's amazing. I thought maybe they accomplished that in post-production, but you lit it so that there's kind yeah. of that effect. Oh, wow. That's yeah. Cool. Visual effects will always want as much real as possible, even if they augment things later. Cause if you have nothing, it's, you're kind of making all of it out of nothing. If you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, when we shoot a visual effects scene, uh, I'll light a character that's not there, like Khonshu or the or the hippo. I will. They'll have a stand-in for that, but I will light that character as if they're there. Because when they capture all the lighting in the room and recreate any of the stuff in CG, if I don't and they light the character separately without me doing it, it'll look 
it'll look like it'll sticks out of the set. It won't look like it's in the real place. Oh, so, wow. you know, and so we bring in like a prop head for Khonshu. We have a giant one that's incredibly detailed. It's like details we see in the show. And then I can actually light him like he's a real character. And then then this, then it will reflect properly when they put a CG one. It will sh should drop in seamlessly and not look like it's a pasted in thing. It, yeah. there's, it's kind of more thought to it than you think of. It's like, just because it's a VFX doesn't mean you just stick it in afterwards. You have to sort of treat it as if it's a real thing, especially if it's also a character that speaks and talks well, that, to talks to Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not simply merely just, you know, throwing in a CGI character. You're like you have to on set, you have to like light it. Oh, wow, well, that's really yeah. cool. And also, you know, we've blocking a scene with, let's say, uh, Kareem, who's playing Khonshu. It allows Oscar to decide, well, then maybe, you know, maybe Khonshu's going to walk over here and he's going to say this. And, you know, there. and if you do all that work when he's a CG character, it should still feel like a person because a person generated all of the performance. You know, it wasn't right. like just an animate. Not that animators can't do that, but you want Oscar to, you know, or May or whoever is acting with Khonshu or, uh, or Ethan to, you know, to be able to have that experience and it'll it'll connect them to this imaginary character that when they drop in there, it won't feel like it's like a cartoon and somebody else talking to a Mark, hopefully. And, you know, the amazing things they did on The Mandalorian, they had their own set with like 360 sort of screens. Yeah, LED screens, yes. Did you use any of that in, in this? We didn't on this project. Um, one thing that you require to use that technology is you have to have all of your backgrounds kind of finished. Uh, and we were not advanced enough in our, you know, conceptual work with, with the art department and even visual effects to have all that ready. Because that the idea is then you would use the screens as a background out of focus and they would have that. Uh, and so they they tailored the Mandalorian production to that. They made they knew they had to do that and they could design quickly the, the worlds they wanted to do that. We were didn't we didn't have the time to build all that stuff. And it wouldn't have been cost effective. <laughs> we didn't have enough scenes to make it cost effective, I don't think. Right. So you went on location like Budapest, you said I think the sands in Georgia, the desert. Uh, yeah, in Jordan. We were in Jordan. Jordan. Uh, in Jordan. Yeah, in, oh. in Wadi Ram, which is where they shot the Martian. It's it's a famous mm. desert. You, you'll see it in like Lawrence of Arabia, and it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's an incredible place. It's in, outside of Aqaba mm -hmm. uh, and all around Budapest. And we built an enormous amount in the studio. We built a back lot for the streets of Cairo uh, and the rooftops in Cairo and, and things like that. It was, uh, yeah, it's an incredible experience. First one, the first episode is probably the easiest, not the easiest, but it's set in like his apartment and at the museum and then I think on the bus. Right. So yeah. was that like the easy, you ease your way into it and then you get more complicated as the shows, as the episodes go by? Well, I mean, it was also, it had the, like some of the most complicated transitions because it had all the blinks with Steven and the Alpine right. town and the car chase. And, you know, we, you know, we did have a few days in oh, the set, right. which was yeah. nice. And, uh, you know, it was a good intro to everything else. It was a good way to also, you know, Oscar acting mostly with himself as he's developing the Steven character right at the beginning. And he's, you know, it's an evolving process uh, for uh, incredible performers like him. Uh, and so it was like actually a great thing to start that way, but it, it's, you know, it, it, it started off like, oh, it's easy. And it's like, oh God, no, it's like, <laughs> and that, and that chase in the museum was much longer originally. Like it was that sequence in previous was immensely much longer. We, we couldn't even actually shoot it all. Uh, and Muhammad wisely managed to, you know, cobble together a couple things together and, and improv some stuff actually and improv some things with Oscar. Uh, but that mirror shot at the end was incredibly complicated. The one in the bathroom was mm -hmm. mind blowingly challenging to figure out how to do. And again, driven by the idea of it being from Steven's point of view, we didn't want to make it a motion control shot, which would make it more robotic. And then